Hey there, and welcome to chapter one. Um, as you're going to see chapter one, there's not really any mathematical formulas that you'll be doing, but you need to have an understanding. Let me, in fact, zoom this a little bit. You need to have a good understanding of these definitions because you're going to see that they continue throughout the course. So I always tell students they ought to make a definition page. Now, I know you're going, but there's a definition page. You, you could print this and add to it, you know, course of it being a Word document, you can um, put examples within here, but you want to keep this near and close and stay organized. So when I ask you what's a population parameter, like the population mean or the population standard deviation, where the population is the whole, the people you're interested in, and we know we can't get everybody, so we typically go out and we get a sample which then would be our sample statistic, like a sample mean. Then we have different types of variables that have a um, level of measurements, like nominal, maybe um, something like different colors of cars, right? Ordinal, where they're naming, but now we put them in order, maybe my top five favorite movies. Interval, where you're looking at um, distance between has meaning, but no true zero. In other words, what we mean by no true zero is that means it's non-existent, okay? So, um, in other words, time, you know, would be interval data. Ratio, I always think of these as something can be twice as, like money. So you, you could have twice as much money as I have. But the, the top two are, are going to be your qualitative variables, categorical. And then the bottom two are going to be your numerical, interval quantitative interval and ratio. All right, and then we get into an, an observational study versus an experiment. An experiment, you actually um, apply some treatment to the individual response, whatever, and then see what happens. Observational study is what it sounds like. You just observe and see what's happening. Different ways you can get data with sampling, systematic. If I say, I'm going to pick every fifth student in this class, 5, 10, 15, all right, so that's just numbering. And it doesn't have to be five. It can be every third student, three, six, nine, and so on. Convenience, just easy to get. I'm going to do a survey in my neighborhood because I don't have to go far. I can just go out outside. Simple random is um, the best example I always use is you put all everybody's name in a hat and everybody has the same chance of being selected. Stratified and cluster kind of go together. They're both subgroups. The only difference with stratified is their, their subgroup has something in column like male, female, where a cluster is a subgroup. My dog. A cluster is a subgroup, but it might just be this group of people here, this group of people here. We didn't select them with anything in common. All right, and then you'll kind of finish up the material where it talks about bias. Um, you know, always like the example of, do you want to do a survey to see if people smoke? Go to a pool hall, because a lot of people smoke, bars, things like that. Do a survey, do you like to read? Go do it, do the survey at the library. Kind of crazy, right? So in other words, bias is, um, you know, you're leading somebody either to answer a particular way. Do you like to read and they're coming out? Or do you think reading is important? That might be more of a leading question that when they say it that way, you're going, yeah, I think it, you know, or, you know, do, do you agree that cigarette smoking is bad for you? Instead of just flat out saying, you know, what are your thoughts on cigarette smoking? All right, and so as I mentioned, this first chapter is going to just be a bunch of reading, a bunch of definitions, get the definitions down. All right, let's have a great first chapter.